What is up boys, welcome to my full Myostatin guide. Now, I made a YouTube short a few years ago that got a lot of publicity. I believe it's at 40,000 views right now, and it's still getting viewed, but that short has a few things that are wrong in it. It was back when I wasn't as consistent with my research. I wasn't that good at checking if sources were reliable. I sort of just believed what I heard back then. That was when I was young. That was when I was still in high school. I made that. So today I'm going to be making a full video where I'm going to break down what exactly myostatin is, how it works, what reducing it is going to do for your body, and what increases it and what decreases it. So you're going to get to know everything there is to know about myostatin in this video. And with that said, I am going to get started. Myostatin, also known as growth differentiation factor 8, is a protein that prevents muscle growth. It does that by binding to receptors on muscle cells, and it's ultimately the cap or the limit that you have on the amount of muscle you could build. A person with a lot more myostatin is going to have a much lower natural limit and a much lower limit in general. Even if you hop on steroids, you're still not going to see much progress if you have high myostatin. It does this because those cells that it's binded to, it prevents them from growing and it also prevents them from differentiating. So what happens is they can't split, you can't create more muscle fibers inside of your arm or whatever muscle you're training. You can't grow those muscle fibers and simply it's going to limit the amount of progress you can make. Now there's ways to counteract this and we're going to get into this. You may be able to conclude this on your own just from hearing that, but it's the main thing that causes muscle degeneration. Somebody with very little myostatin isn't going to lose much muscle when they stop training, and ultimately as they age, they're also not going to lose a whole lot of muscle. So when you stay out of the gym for a prolonged period of time, this is the main thing that's going to harm you, the main thing that's going to cause that muscle to deteriorate or shrink. Now, it's very rare for humans to have a deficiency in myostatin. Now, the common example that most people could think of is Eddie Hall, but because of that, there haven't been many human studies on people with low levels of myostatin. But what there has been is there's been studies on mice through manipulating their genes. I don't know exactly what they did, but these studies on mice showed that just by removing the myostatin or creating a deficiency in this protein, it led to two to three times the amount of muscle mass with zero training. Just from removing this protein, you had two to three times the amount of muscle mass. So this is a protein that plays a major role in your ability to build muscle or how easily you can maintain muscle or even your starting point. Now, you may be wondering why exactly do we even have this? Doesn't this just sound like a downside? And simply it's because of how humans worked not too long ago. When you are an individual with more muscle mass, you require more energy, you require more resources. If everybody had deficiencies in myostatin, then simply we'd require too much resources to effectively survive. It would significantly harm our survival rate in the wild. So by having this gene, it does prevent us from requiring too much food as a species or too much water. And then also muscle mass has some negative effects back in the day that aren't too important now, but things such as endurance and flexibility, you want high endurance so you could either chase down your food or you could run away from something trying to eat you. But then there's the other factor of you need to be flexible because you don't want to get injured when you're doing these activities because an injury used to be way bigger of a deal. You used to not have that hospital next door to go to if you break your arm. So now before I explain how you decrease the amount of myostatin in your body, let me tell you how exactly you increase it, what exactly you need to avoid. And the first thing on this is going to be cortisol. Now, cortisol or chronically high stress is going to greatly increase your myostatin and it's overall just going to have a very negative effect. Now keep in mind, this is only chronic high levels of cortisol. Having high levels of cortisol in the morning isn't going to harm this, but when you're going to bed, you really need to learn how to relax your body. 
next is going to be overtraining. You need to make sure to be taking your rest days, doing the things to recover, sitting in the sauna, eating your food, sleeping, everything you could think of to recover, you need to be doing and you can't be overtraining. You can't be going to your sports practice for two hours and then immediately after going to the gym for two more hours. That's just too much on your body. Overtraining is bad for your myostatin. And then next, you may expect it, but alcohol, pretty much bad for everything. Myostatin, it increases it, so avoid alcohol. And then the final thing is going to be poor sleep. An individual who gets more sleep is going to have lower levels of myostatin and ultimately is just going to be able to build more muscle. There's a vast number of benefits from sleep and it may seem like I'm just repeating myself with some of these things, but the truth is it needs to be repeated because these are the things that really do play a big role on your body. They help pretty much everything when you get these factors in line, so they are important to focus on. Now I'm going to get into how to reduce it. Now the first thing I'm going to say is going to be IGF-1. Not only does IGF-1 activate pathways that reduce the amount of myostatin in your body, but the IGF-1 itself actually suppresses the myostatin so it doesn't play as much of a role on the muscles it is attached to. So IGF-1 is something that helps a good amount. Now, how do you increase your IGF-1? I'll make a full guide on it, but simply for now, your sunlight and your circadian rhythm are two very important things. You need to be getting sufficient amounts of sunlight and you need to be getting your circadian rhythm set and in line, waking up before 8 a.m. and going to bed at the same time every single night. The next things to increase it, the supplement I name super commonly. I am a huge fan of these supplements and I pretty much name them in every video, but zinc, magnesium, and D3 are all things that's going to increase your IGF-1 levels, so make sure you have sufficient levels of all three of those. The next thing I have for you is follostatin. Now, this is literally the myostatin antagonist. It blocks the myostatin signal, preventing it from working. So this may seem like something that's pretty potent and something you want to pay attention to, and that is because it is. Now, you could look at folostin as the opposite protein from myostatin. Folostin is going to bind to that myostatin and really prevent it from doing anything. It's going to completely block it. And it does this by binding to it. Now, you may think of estrogen binding to androgen receptors, or for which blocks testosterone and prevents testosterone from playing its role. And yes, this is the exact same idea. When folostin binds to your myostatin, then it's going to block your myostatin from playing its role. Now, this protein is so potent that it's used in peptides that are used to prevent muscle degeneration as one ages. But the unfortunate thing is you can't directly consume this or you can't directly get this into your body from food. So you may ask, well, how exactly could I increase this? And I'll be getting into that next with the next actual thing that's in food that is going to increase your levels of this protein. But I'm just going to throw it out there before I end this because it is really closely related to myostatin and it's important to understand. It is produced in the liver and the pituitary glands or your balls. Now this thing that increases your folistin, now hopefully I say this right, is epicotoca epicotocin, <laughs> second time I said it right. No, that's the only time I'm going to say it because I actually cannot pronounce this. But anyways, it is a flavonoid antioxidant, meaning that you could get plenty in your food and it has been seen to reduce your levels of myostatin directly and increase your folostatin. So I'm going to be explaining how you could increase this because it is quite important. It also improves insulin resistance and it increases blood flow and vascularity. So some of these foods might be great before the gym because you do have increased blood flow. 
Now, you could actually supplement with this too, and one study showed that after just seven days of supplementing with this, then it did increase the amount of strength those individuals had, and they had lower levels of myostatin in their body. Some foods you could get it from are green tea, cocoa, dark chocolate, and fruits. So all of those things, normal stuff in your diet that are all great for you. They're all pretty important. I've recommended green tea because it has things that support your sleep and other L-theanine, which supports other things too. But all fruits, great again. I've recommended fruit for a long time, and that's all I have for that. Now, lactate is the next thing I have, which is a myostatin inhibitor. Now, lactate is something that actually has quite a few positive effects on your body. So increasing the amount of lactate in your body is pretty potent and does a lot of things. Now, it also increases your testosterone levels, but that's another topic. But how exactly do you increase the amount of lactate? It's really just training more intense, training closer to failure or further past failure, and overall just giving your body a harder time inside of the gym. Give yourself that real burn cramping feeling. That's what you want to aim for. And then the other thing is inflammation. The more inflammation that's in your body, the more your myostatin is going to drop. So some things you could do to decrease your myostatin are fish oils, fruits, once again, almonds, and then cold exposure is a great thing for inflammation. And then finally, we have train with lower reps. So train more five to eight reps rather than that real high rep range so you may do something like real heavy leg extensions this is going to give you that big lactate burn and it's also going to be something you could train with lower reps you don't have to train with higher reps now the next thing is short-term fasting and what i mean by short-term fasting is fast where you have a 16 hour window of not eating and then an eight hour window of eating be careful with this because if you do prolong this fast or make it so it's longer than a 16 hour window of not eating then your body is going to actually increase your myostatin not decrease it now the reason it decreases your level of myostatin is because it increases your ampk activation which is also the same as just activating the enzyme kinase now, what this is going to do is it's going to downregulate your myostatin, and it's also going to promote using fat and carbs that you intake as fuel. It's going to try to use any carbs you intake as fuel rather than just going straight to storing them as fat and making it as something you have to burn off rather than using it immediately. That is all I have for myostatin. If you're interested in frequently receiving small little things, small little adjustments you can make to improve yourself throughout your daily life, then go ahead and join my email list in the description. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. It really helps me. But as always, Perspicacity is our grindstone for success. Keep on grinding, boys.